are, she is in the seat. And all the recommendations that were mentioned and proposed by her, the likes of Rans for Jampo, and together with his head deputy, Dr. Bosman Asari, have been literally thrown to the dogs. So you ask yourself, was she screaming at the, on the sidelines because she wanted in? Was she screaming because she wanted the best for Ghana? <clears throat> We know about the collapse of the Dolly Bridge. And the member of parliament came to tell us how that has affected them. Mr. Richard Nyama told us about Pandai, right? He is an MPP man. And he told us how that has affected his community. He, he even asked that for special constituencies where hard to reach places, the Electoral Commission could actually give them special dispensation. But no, the Electoral Commission, they don't listen. And I have said here that the Electoral Commission knows that this will be the biggest dress rehearsal that they will have for election 2024. I recently got an, an invitation for uh, a, a meeting, election-related meeting, and I saw, interestingly, uh, Ambassador Sylvia Anos name, our Ambassador to Denmark. If you don't remember Sylvia Anos, she was at the Electoral Commission, speaking for the Electoral Commission, and she was the one who did the last declaration or so, the sixth declaration of the results for 2020. The day right after, we saw the letters flying around that she has been made an ambassador to Denmark. Okum Chola is a miracle. She's back. They gave me an invitation. Is there? On my desk somewhere. If you doubt it, I can show it to you. That she was going to give the closing remarks for some election-related thing. I have stopped attending those things, actually. So maybe they should stop sending me those invitations because I, I, I can't risk it going to such programs. You ask a question, and your question is reframed as if you don't have a mind of your own and you don't know what exactly you wanted to ask. But people have raised concerns. People have raised questions. And I've said that the Electoral Commission together with the NCC, and the NCC is also quiet, because the NCC and the Electoral Commission always will find pleasure to say, People should participate in the local level election, district assembly elections. They have always told us, the election of assemblymen, district unit committee, etc. They have told us to partake in them. And we know how the turnout has been low within those spaces. We have set up district assembly elections coming up. Now, if I'm a new voter and I have heard the Electoral Commission in the past speak about participation in the district level uh, elections so that I can get the right people to become my assemblyman, my unit committee, my works chairman, whatever it is, I can get all these people in there, the right pair of hands to get in there. And I've had the National Commission on Civic Education talk about the same things with the advanced role going about. Maybe I'll add the ISD, even though they are, they are not properly resourced. And I've heard those things, and I want to now participate as a new voter if I have not been able to register because I couldn't cross a certain river, I couldn't cross a certain lake, I couldn't afford certain transport to get there, I couldn't bring along a guarantor, and I couldn't pay for them, I couldn't convince them enough to come and guarant for me, I have lost that opportunity to participate in the district-level elections, which would also be the dress rehearsal for all new voters. So the question I asked this morning is that the Electoral Commission's job is supposed to give the citizenry some voter education. The National Commission for Civic Education is supposed to give the voters some voter education. Question, have they been able to deliver that? The Electoral Commission is supposed to register people and not put pe impediments with, on, on their way so that they are, they are able to register and then we get a whole pool and then we can actually say, oh, this is the universal adult suffrage. Have we been able to achieve that? Because the Electoral Commission on any day, whether it is Jinadukwe Mensa, whether it is Bosman Asari, whether it is Sribo Kweku, whether it is uh, Mr. Tete, or any of them who are there, or the party people who have been put at the Electoral Commission who are there, working now, here there's a new uh, acting PR who are there, they would not use their pocket money, Taflache, to organize whatever they are doing. 
And we know that on election day proper, the Electoral Commission will carry machines, whether you are in hell or heaven. They will bring you machines and bring you personnel and bring you materials for you to be able to cast your vote. We know that in this country, those who speak about peace and justice and those who talk about security and preserving the security of this country will ensure that we get security people at every single polling station, no matter where it's cited. We know that in this country, the Peace Council will start talking about preserving the peace and tranquility in the country beginning next year, maybe at the end of the year. We know that the Catholic Bishop Conference will speak. We know that the Christian Council will speak. We know that other citizens who have gray hair, senior citizens, will start speaking. And sometimes you talk to their contemporaries who are 80, who are 90, some who are 75, some who are 68, 65, and they express their shock that, look, we are old enough. We are not in the public domain. Those who are in the public domain have suddenly kept quiet when things are happening. And they say, oh, we voted in the plebiscite. We have voted in, in, in other elections in this country. And this is not how things were conducted. Now with the benefit of technology, we are doing things as if we are now beginning the process. And I remember as a journalist how 20, in 2012, yes, Evans Nimaku, who is now the director of elections at the MPP, and Abu Ramadan, NHIS registrant, six to lie, they took it to court. And we, we spoke about continuous registration of people. Is the Electoral Commission able to tell us if they continuously register people? It's a very simple question. And anytime you speak about these things, they say, oh, you, are, you are talking too much and the peace and security. How do you achieve peace if there's no justice? How does the servant become the master who dictates and doesn't listen to the master? How? We are in this together. We are suffering. The economy is not good. And times are hard. The government tells us so. Inflation is over 40%. The government knows it. GDP, all of, all of those variables are preached to us every day. So we have to tighten our belt. GRA is moving from shop to shop even at night, 11, 12, 1 a.m. Uh, to go in, 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 1 a.m., 2 a.m., uh, 12 p.m., uh, 12 a.m., 11 p.m. They're moving around to go and check all those places. And collect money for the government. So there's a, already a question between uh, of tax utilization and tax mobilization. There's a question. But what I'm talking about is the Electoral Commission. And you know, interestingly, we have had the Electoral Commission is in, in this country's before, country before. We have had Electoral Commissions in this country before. It does appear that when we started putting the women there, the women now see it as some adjoining kitchen to their homes. So now they treat the electoral commission as if it is, it is their personal and private property. I have read uh, Justice VCRC Crab's book, Bless his soul, may he rest in peace. We're in the same church as an Anglican. When he used to write the election results on a blackboard at the Independence Square. Today we have, we have computers, we have biometric machines we have everything else and yet we are behaving even awkwardly than those times when we did not have the benefit of those things. so what exactly is happening who is the electoral commission really working for in whose interest is the electoral commission functioning because it is a fact party people test con people patrons have been put at the electoral commission it is a fact. Undeniable, incontrovertible fact. Party people, NPP party people, Tescon people have been put at the Electoral Commission. To what end? And this is happening under a Democrat in the name of Nana Dodanko Ekufuado, demonstrated more than everybody in this country, spoke vociferously more than everybody in this country, gave everybody the impression that he was going to bring hope, restore confidence, renew our democratic credentials, and take it further. If you do the analysis of what he said and what he's doing now, you see that he's a total failure at all. 
but they won't allow you to say it because when you say it, because they go and lick boots, it makes him look bad. And in looking bad, it turns out that you are the one causing trouble. But we are not causing trouble so far. Have I insulted anybody? No. So far, I've only asked questions. Do the questions have answers beyond the insults and the attacks? Yes, they do. So if the questions have answers, why are the answers not being provided? Is the government of Ghana telling the Electoral Commission that they don't have the money to support them to be able to register people to keep the democracy intact so that we can vote and elect leaders both for the executive and for the legislature? Is the government of Ghana complaining about that? So why is the Electoral Commission arrogating that unto itself? Because if you read the Constitution, it starts with we, we the people of Ghana. It is a we Jane Adukwe Mensa, we Bosman Asari, we Freeman Tete. It, it, it didn't say that. Not Freeman Tete. We Mr. Tete. It didn't say that. It says we the people of Ghana. The people have the power. Today the people are meeting at the Independence Square. Occupy Bank of Ghana. That's where they are meeting. And they are meeting there to protest how the central bank, as the lender of last resorts, has gotten itself into a mess of losing 60.8 billion Ghana cities. How the Bank of Ghana, in all the stress and distress and mistress that we're going through is able to vote millions of dollars, not CDs, in the construction of a new edifice. While people at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital who have kidney problems are forced to pay 765.42 Ghana CDs instead of a 380 approved originally by Parliament. The CEO is still opposed because Danado, again, he said one thing, he's doing another thing. What I ordered versus what I got, that is the kind of leadership that the president is giving us. And leadership is cause. Everything else is effect. I'll tell you something. I had a conversation with Honorable Mahama Ayariga. He went into a meeting with the police hierarchy. You know, they've been talking about the Bank of Ghana as a security zone. The Bank of Ghana is a security zone. I asked, and he asked them a simple question. Show me where the ends of this security zone is so that those of us who want to go and demonstrate to register a displeasure on how the Bank of Ghana has been mismanaged and why the Bank of Ghana cannot have the impetus to be still cracking the whip on banks because the Bank of Ghana cracked the whips on banks they collapsed banks in this country. People lost their jobs. People have died. People's monies were kept forever. People's businesses collapsed because the Bank of Ghana insisted that the people were not playing by the rules and they were insolvent. Today, the supervisor of supervisors, they have declared 60.8 billion loss. And people are still there. Everybody has their job. The last time I told you that the Bank of Ghana, people work there. People go on retirement. They are replaced. You, who is asked by your political whatever to come and defend and insult people, have you ever, with your degree in banking and finance or business administration or economics, have you ever seen a notice from the Bank of Ghana saying that there's vacancy and that you, Kofi Mubarawa, can apply for it before? Have you seen it? But the Bank of Ghana is always full. And I showed you how a, the salary of some top executive of the Bank of Ghana is as much as over 280,000 Ghana cities. 280,000 Ghana cities. Some people take that at the Bank of Ghana every month, though. 280,000 Ghana cities at the Bank of Ghana every month. I'm not talking 28,000. 200,000. Titi, 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 two million cities. Some people take it every month at the Bank of Ghana. They collect it clean. Some people take 160,000. Some people take 180,000. Some people take 250,000. Every month, oh, they take it. Play Ayari guys' video for me. For instance, when they invited us to the meeting, after all this hula that they were making about uh, 
uh, the Bank of Ghana being right. a security zone, Bank of Ghana security zone, everywhere right. Bank of Ghana security zone. Mm -hmm. So at the meeting, I said, yeah, we agree the Bank of Ghana security zone, okay? Okay, good. Tell us where the zone ends. I see, that's they right. were there for one hour. They couldn't tell us where the zone ends. We said no. We don't want any other discussion. We just want to know where the security zone ends because we want to comply with what you are saying. You are our police service. You are here for all of us. You say Bank of Ghana is a security zone. We say show us the law that says that it is a security zone. You don't have a law. But let's even grant that it's a security zone. Tell us where the zone ends because the zone cannot be at infinity. Of course. So you were looking for the. I, I swear, the they end. couldn't tell us where the zone ends. They just sat there and said, "Oh, you see, honourable, we said no, 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 no. It's not about honourable. Mm -hmm. We just want you to tell us where the zone ends, and we want to demonstrate and come and stop right at the point where you have decided is the zone, and then you can get the governor to come and collect our petition. They could not tell us where the zone ends. So when you behave that way, you begin to display lack of good faith. And clearly, you are not even acting according to law, and yet you are supposed to be law enforcer. Now, Mr. Wood, so the police could not tell the people who were in the meeting where the ends of that national security, so-called security zone, was. They couldn't tell them. They couldn't give them the law that support the actions that they are taking. But you know, in this country, the police can give you an advice, but it is actually not an advice, it's an order. And the police is supposed to be our friends. This morning on my way to work, I saw them. The two vehicles on the uh, circle interchange, the overpass. The two vehicles, one just when you climb up, and the other one up there watching over the demonstrators who have gathered at the Obra spot. The first vehicle, they had balaclavas, there, but they had not completely covered their faces. Yes, 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 I saw them. The police is supposed to be a friend. They are doing their work. 